So we're going to look at the skill of duck diving. What's a duck dive? Well, we've shown you in other videos how you do the press up on larger boards to go through the white water, the smaller waves, and with the bigger waves you do the roll. And this is what we traditionally did for many, many, many thousands of years. We rolled our boards. But this duck dive came along particularly when the short boards came along, really about that time. So we haven't been doing it that long. We're still developing the techniques of duck dive. Uh, and you'll talk to many different people that will give you different opinions on how you duck dive. But it's one of the harder skills to learn correctly, I would say. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff on YouTube about duck diving. Um, there's a fantastic uh, bit of film, it's quite recent, of the great surfer John John Florence in a swimming pool duck diving and he can literally go up the swimming pool underwater with his surfboard. It's incredible. But us mere mortals, we're not going to be able to do that. And duck diving is a skill you'll keep on working on probably for the rest of your surfing life if you're using shorter boards. I can duck dive a nine foot board if it's the right type of board. I was shown how to do it, it's called a slice duck dive. I enjoy duck diving uh, seven foot six surfboards. Uh, it's a heavy-ish seven six, not super heavy. That's one of my favorite lengths in big waves to try and duck dive. I struggle sometimes with a five eight. You think, well, that's a little ball, wouldn't that be easy? Duck diving is a very complex thing. So let's look at the physics of it and have a look on YouTube. There's some good stuff and some bad stuff and we'll put some links to the good stuff into this video as well that you can watch. Okay. So first of all, the mechanics. Our wave is rolling. We know that. The wave's coming up, pitching over, and it may not be pitching top to bottom like this, you know, that plunging wave we talk about. It might be simply a rolling line of white water. But it's spinning, and it's spinning around and around and around as it goes. Now that's important to remember. Like we showed you in the diagram of the roll, when I do the duck dive, I'm trying to tap into an energy that's going to send me that way. So, we've got to convince ourselves that we are going to be taken by energy, not just hit by this wave, but also directed through the wave. This is what happens. Here's our flat water leading towards our wave. And here, at this point, a good distance away, is our surfer. Now our surfer sighting the wave. This is really important that we don't take our eyes off this wave coming at us. Many of you will put your heads down in effort. Not the best thing to do. Keep that head up and increase your paddle stroke. At this moment here we're trying to sprint towards this wave. Because the faster you paddle the easier you'll go under the water. Now at about a surfboard and a bit length away, I start to go into my duck dive. So if I am got to this point here, I'm just about thinking about going into the duck dive. Okay, I now keep that word in my mind, duck dive. If you ever see a duck on a pool, swans do the same kind of thing, you know, you see that duck tip its head to go down. That's what we need to do. We need to tip our heads and our shoulders downwards to start this movement. So don't be afraid to raise up and start tipping yourself forwards. So that's what our surf is doing. The head is tipping downwards. You can see the angle of it. And what will follow is the shoulders. Now this tipping point, don't forget that wave's coming towards you. This tipping point is super important to almost think of sinking yourself under. Somebody once said a really good analogy of a spoon going into ice cream, that kind of angle that you go into a, a nice ice cream to get your, uh, your spoonful. But what we've got to think of is that the foot 
or the knee comes up onto the tail of the board and starts to drive under. Now this is extremely exaggerated, this diagram. Of course it wouldn't happen like this, but that's what we're trying to think of. We're trying to tip and there will be a driving movement of the foot or knee forwards. Now this is the big thing. People will say, oh do you use your knee, do you use your foot? I use my knee in smaller, smaller waves. My oldest son, who rides Jamie, who coaches here, rides really big waves. He actually uses his knee and his shin. But as soon as the wave gets to a certain size for me, or I'm using a bigger board, or a high volume board, I use my foot. I like my foot to drive through. And that's what's happening in this diagram, in this diagram here. You drive that foot. That foot is pushing through the tail, not just pushing downwards, but it seems to push forwards. Now this is so hard to explain. In a later part of this short video, we're going to show you the physical action on the beach using a demo board. But again, when you tune into your YouTube videos, you'll see that knee or that foot pushing down. Now, this is where techniques will change. I read the other day, a girl, a very good surfer, she says, I like to keep myself high above the board. It seems to keep me more stable underwater because the turbulence goes between my body and the board. So I'm a coach. I'm going to go and try that. So I went out and tried it. It didn't work for me at all. But it might work for some of you. What I tend to do is to go low to the board. Once I've done my push and I'm going underneath the wave, I bring my body to the board. Again, uh, my oldest son, Jamie, he sometimes calls it, I mean, he's just big waves, crocodile wrestling. You know where you just see that person wrestling a crocodile? Sometimes he said you're almost like wrapping your legs around it. There are some amazing things you'll see at this moment. Now, I'm a normal human being. I kind of go under and keep my body to the board. Look at the film of John John. He keeps one foot on the board and then kind of moves the board in a sort of a, 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 an action that actually propels him. His other leg is kicking. Kelly Slater, I watched Kelly doing a video once. He went under, pushed, and then did breaststroke movements with his leg under the water. I can't do that. I'm just going to do what most of us to do, hang on in there. I get under it, I push, and then I bring my body to the board. Now this I've always taught. If you pull that board up to your body under the water, you're losing depth, and depth is what you want. If you pull the body down to the board, you maintain more depth, so I do believe that for me. Now at that moment there, I pull my body down to the board, my head might be up, it might be down, but I just relax. That's the big thing. I just wrap myself there and then let myself come back up. Now, this is absolutely vital. Many people with duck dive say you should keep your eyes open. And I think that's not a bad idea. You see, underneath this wave, there's bubbles. And you can, with a bit of practice, start to see where those bubbles are and you try and go to the not bubble water. The deeper you stay under, the clearer that water is, the less turbulence you're getting from the wave. The strange thing about it is some of the waves that look like this and you think, oh my God, that's going to really hit me. They hit you so perfectly, they push you out the back really quickly. Sometimes these big, long, big rolling lines of white water are some of the hardest to get through. The pitching, plunging waves sometimes is one of the easiest, depend on your timing. Also, it can be the hardest one you've tried to go through. Duck diving is a massive skill. Eyes open? Fine. But what happens if I'm in a sandy beach break? You know, you're at Mandaka, uh, and it's just that water is a mixture. It's like sand and water, you know? You're going to have your eyes closed. I use eyes closed in the bigger ways sometimes to help me concentrate. Now, we're going to have a look on the beach now at the skill of duck diving, the physical part of it. You'll be practicing this forever. One thing I would say is that you can duck dive certain types of longboards. And we do it by slightly 
tipping that board. It's called a slice duck dive. Now, Lee Ryan, I think he was fifth in the world in longboarding when he worked for me, top surfer, he's one of the top coaches in New Zealand now. He showed us in one day how you could slice duck dive a longboard and we all got it. All you do is that as you paddle towards it, at this moment here, you don't push straight. You slightly slide that board underneath. Now I've known slight, slice duck dives for a long time, but I didn't think they'd work with such big boards. They can. Watch competition long boards, they'll often duck dive those long boards through pretty big waves. So, that's duck diving. One thing for sure, when you come back up, you must get into what we call trim. Many people, they'll come back up and they'll start to paddle. Come back up, check you're in the right place, then you start to go. I had a funny surf trip not long ago, and I was at somewhere where it was just big surf, closing out, and every day was the same, big surf, closing out. And I kind of fixed in my head, right, I'm going to work on the duck diving. I'd actually choose the big waves that were coming. Okay, if I don't paddle too hard now, I'll actually get the moment where it's going to be really big and rolling and I can practice my duck dive. Do you have that kind of feeling? It's a bit like the rugby player wanting the tackle. You know, like the golfer wanting the difficult uh, shot. Hunt out your duck diving. Don't be afraid of it. Because the more you really work on your duck diving, the more confident your surfing's going to be. And you, you, you get through bigger waves, you're having more fun. It doesn't become a scary thing. There's going to be moments in your duck diving, when you're paddling out in bigger waves, where you may think of throwing the board. Now, you shouldn't, but if you do, you must 100% check that there's nobody behind you. When you let a board go, if you're going to swim for the bottom, you make sure that you know that board's not going to hit somebody else. But we're talking about duck diving. Best of luck with your work. This next sequence now shows you this kind of physical uh, section. And check your stuff on YouTube, okay? Thanks, thanks. So this side view, it's not ideal because the board's not sinking, but I want you to see the physical kind of movement. Head and chest up and paddling. I'm going to do the foot press through duck dive first. That's my favorite. Watch the head and neck and shoulder go over and down. Holding onto the board under the wave, come back up. Let's watch it again. For up, driving downwards, holding underneath the water, coming back up. Next technique now is using the knee or the whole of the knee and the shin, the lower part of the leg. Press down and through. Now this is slightly always out of sequence. We're just trying to show you particularly the head and shoulders. Just the knee. I used that for many years, but now I like using the foot. You can use a combination. Pressing down is a good submerge there. Watch the head and shoulders. On this one, as I come up, I stay a little bit high on the board. Some people like to do this and kick the legs as they come up. The last one is where we keep space between the body and the board underwater. I don't like this myself, some people really do. And there, and I keep some space and come back up. 